Hello everyone, welcome to Bitter Code. So first of all, thank you everyone uh, for uh, a good response in uh, my first video over Java projects. So it was overall a good uh, response because it is the first uh, video of mine on the projects. So thank you everyone for that. And please uh, like, share and subscribe to our channel uh, Bitter Code. So, okay. So in this video, uh, I will I have come up with some uh, other project that is tender management system. So uh, I will show you uh, how we can uh, configure this project and install everything required to run this project in your system. And I will share the uh, source code also for this project. So stay tuned. So let's continue. So first, I will have a small introduction about this project. So what it will be doing and uh, what is this tender management management system? so let's say uh, we have some contractor or some uh, organization uh, which have some projects uh, p1 or p, uh, some projects and it have some budget uh, with uh, suppose 1000 rupees or 1 lakh rupees something like that so uh, this organization and contractor will come to our tender management system and it will uh, post their project uh, with the budget and the deadline and uh, uh, the number of uh, requirements so our tender management system also have different vendors logged in so all the vendors will be able to uh, see the projects uh, which is launched and they can bid among this project so suppose uh, this project uh, budget is 1000 rupees so this vendor can uh, bid their amount and deadline so uh, they can bid like uh, okay i will complete this project uh, uh, just in just in suppose uh, uh, 900 rupees 900 uh, rupees but i will take the deadline in uh, like one month or uh, something and similarly the second uh, vendor can bid this uh, something like uh, it can be completed in 12 1200 rupees and uh, it gives some d2 deadline so uh, similarly some uh, all the vendors can be able to bid uh, if they like the project so once the bidding is done uh, suppose the third one also bid for uh, 1000 the exact exact amount and it takes some d3, d3 uh, deadline so it will complete uh, the project with within this budget and it will take uh, d3 uh, like d3 uh, like suppose uh, uh, three months or one month or two months something like that it gave a deadline so once this all uh, uh, bid is done now uh, our tender management uh, system will be able to show these all the bids to the organization so organization will be able to see all the bids from different vendors and different prices with different deadlines so according to their preferences they will be now able to assign or reject the uh, bids so if they want they can assign uh, their projects to this 900 rupees vendor with one month or 1200 vendors with uh, two months uh, or something like that so this is our whole uh, project requirement so uh, uh, let's uh, continue and uh, see how we can uh, import this thing in our uh, local system and how we can implement this one. So, okay. Now, the base code for this project uh, tender management system uh, is stored at the GitHub and I will paste this URL of the GitHub uh, in the description box. So uh, first, have a look at uh, what are the available functionalities. Uh, so if you scroll down in the readme, I have updated all the steps as well as the functionalities supported by this project. So actually, there are two types of user in the system, uh, administrator and vendor. And uh, the administrator will have these much uh, functionalities like create a new vendor, view all the vendors, uh, create a new tender, view all the tenders, view all the bids of a tender and select a bid and again uh, this uh, vendor role have these all functionality like view all the current tenders and bid against a tender uh, 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 like check the bid uh, uh, status whether it is uh, approved or not and also he can check the bid history and some other things like uh, it, it can update his own profile it can update his own password so these things uh, you will be able to see once uh, the project gets started and the technology that i have used here is html css javascript bootstrap uh, as for the front end and for back end, I have used uh, Java, JDBC, JSP, and Servlet. So it is totally J2E. Uh, I have used and uh, for database, I have used the uh, MySQL. So uh, these are the tools required. So we will have a look at them, but uh, before that, first uh, uh, just uh, go through it. Uh, I will take you through a demo of this project. 
So this project will uh, somehow look like this thing. So you can see uh, this is the front end uh, project, front end uh, website uh, of this project. And here uh, we have uh, latest updates and notice. So in this section, all the uh, approved tenders and their uh, related notice will come up here. And here, uh, if you see related, uh, recently approved tender, so here you will be able to see uh, the application ID and uh, the tender uh, which is assigned to which uh, tend uh, this application ID is assigned to which tender. So according to the uh, uh, tender approval, uh, this will automatically show up here. Another thing is here you can see uh, login as a uh, account or uh, admin or vendor. These options are given here. You can register also. So sign up button and login button is there. Uh, we can also list of build, see the list of builders, uh, uh, vendors, approval status, search status. But th these things are available only if uh, the vendor is logged in. Similarly, for tenders, we can view the tenders, uh, apply for a tender and bid for a, uh, approval status. So these things will be available once uh, the account, uh, uh, like the vendor is logged in. But before going deep into the demo uh, of this project, uh, first let's uh, have a setup of this project and then we can take a look. So uh, before uh, for doing setup, first uh, we will have a look at what are the uh, software uh, required and how we can do the setup for all of those things. So uh, the software and tools required for this project is Git, uh, Java, Eclipse, Enterprise Edition, uh, Apache Maven, MySQL and MySQL Workbench. These things should be installed in your system. And uh, let's have a look how you can check uh, uh, whether these things are installed in your system. So to check Git, uh, first you can open a command prompt and uh, you can go there and here I'm just minimizing it so here you can type uh, like git and hyphen hyphen version so uh, you can see now git version is shown here if you are unable to see the git version here if you are getting some uh, error like git uh, command not found that means git is not installed in your system so you have to uh, install it uh, so to install the Git, I have created a separate video on my channel. So you can uh, check the software installation uh, uh, playlist of my uh, YouTube channel. So you can get the videos of all this required software there. Similarly, to check the Java, you'll just uh, enter like Java hyphen hyphen version. And it will show you the Java installed version. This version should be greater than 8 and uh, it is right now 19 in my system. That is uh, perfectly fine. Not a problem. Similarly, you can check for uh, Eclipse, uh, uh, Eclipse Enterprise Edition. You can check uh, here like uh, in your... Uh, uh, windows and then go to apps and here you can uh, scroll down or somewhere uh, you will get uh, eclipse enterprise edition so let's say in the eclipse we have the eclipse id for enterprise java and web developer so if it is not available here then again uh, first download uh, it from uh, and take help from other uh, my other video i have created a separate video for this also and similarly to check the maven you can just click here uh, maven hyphen hyphen version so uh, it will show you the uh, Maven uh, installed version and for MySQL you can do MySQL hyphen hyphen version. So you can see MySQL version is also shown here and to uh, uh, you uh, like MySQL is also enough but if you want uh, a proper uh, setup or uh, easy setup of uh, this database connection so you can use the MySQL workbench also. So uh, to check whether MySQL workbench in, uh, or MySQL is installed in your system uh, just go to uh, uh, my apps all apps and here scroll to my SQL. so if you scroll down and in the my SQL section you will be able to see my SQL workbench so if this is not installed in your system just uh, install it first and then come back to watch the further section okay so now we are done with the setup and uh, we will uh, see how we can uh, clone and import this project uh, so for that we need this url I will paste the URL in the description. Just copy this uh, uh, URL and open it in the browser. And now here, if you go down, you can check here, port symbol is given there. Just click on that. And here, from here, uh, you have to use this URL. So just copy this URL. And uh, you just go to any, any folder, create a new folder and open this command prompt here. So just type CMD and click enter. It will open a command prompt here. And now we are just uh, write the command with clone and paste the copy text and you can hit enter so what it will do is it will uh, just clone the project into uh, this particular uh, uh, folder in uh, of this location so let it complete first this is the uh, one of the way to clone the project or you can do it uh, directly from uh, your uh, eclipse also 
So let it uh, clone first and then uh, we will check uh, how we can do through Eclipse. Uh, for that, you have to use uh, Eclipse ID for Enterprise ID, sir. You can check there uh, in your all apps and here you can scroll down and go to Eclipse and here Eclipse ID for Enterprise Java and Web Developer. So you have to use this one. Uh, not this one not the second one so if you have if you don't have this one just uh, uh, watch any other video i have already created a video for that so you can use that one and then come back so here you have to uh, specify your workspace location so i'm just giving a name uh, uh, any location eclipse enterprise edition and just click on launch So now you can see uh, this. Uh, this is starting the Eclipse uh, ID, and uh, parallelly, you can see uh, this Git clone is also successful. Okay, so this is started now. Here we can close this uh, welcome window, and if you wanted to change uh, the uh, theme of this, you can just go to window and appearance. Oh, sorry, preferences, and here uh, search for theme. And uh, here you can change the theme from dark to white. I'm just changing it to a uh, light. So apply, and uh, it will ask to restart. So just click on that. So it will restart the eclipse for you. Again, click on launch. So now you can see uh, it is uh, started here. Now we have uh, to import the project in uh, Eclipse here. Yeah. So you, you can do uh, one thing if you have already uh, cloned the project, so it should be available in your uh, like uh, the uh, place where you have cloned it. So you can see here inside Git the folder I have created, uh, it is available now. So you have to import this project. So to import this, you have to go to uh, Eclipse, click on File and Import, and from here uh, you have to go to maven and existing maven project and here uh, select the directory which uh, installation directory where you where you install it so i have installed inside git folder and uh, tend the management system so just click on this and here if you click finish uh, the import will be learned so this is one of the way to import uh, if if you have uh, uh, cloned the repository in some location but but if if you don't want it to clone in some uh, particular location you can do it uh, from eclipse itself so for that you will just go to the uh, uh, github and here uh, go to the code and copy this url once you copy this url just come back to eclipse and here uh, go to file and here import and instead of selecting the maven here this time we will select the git and here project from git now click on next so and here uh, select the clone uri click on next again and here uh, it will automatically paste the uh, like uh, uh, copied url if it is not uh, coming here just uh, control v and paste the URI, uri here and again click on next so once you do that it will uh, ask to uh, uh, check all the branch you can uh, select master or you can select all also no issue click on next again and here you have to select which location you wanted to uh, clone this so uh, i will uh, go to the same directory which i cloned there so git it's already here so i will create another uh, new folder you can keep any folder in the management system and i am going to save it here so you can now see it is done and the branch initial branch should be master everything is origin now this is also fine now click on next and once you do this uh, it is actually cloning the project uh, parallelly into your uh, file system so uh, after it is cloned it will show you uh, an option to import in the Eclipse. So let it uh, complete first. Okay, so now uh, it is giving an option to import existing Eclipse uh, project. So click on next and again click on finish. So now if you see uh, one tender management uh, project has, is showing here now. So that means uh, this project has been cloned and imported successfully. So now we will go to the next step that is if you go to the uh, github repository again and if you scroll down i have written the steps to uh, execute the dummy database initialization so uh, one of the way is to uh, use the sql dump file that i have given here if you control click here it will open a dump file 
an SQL uh, dump file. So uh, you can use these commands to uh, uh, like use this uh, SQL dump file to uh, make a dummy table in your database or or you have another option. So just go back and uh, if you see here dummy database initialization using query. So you can use this one. For that we need to use either MySQL command prompt or MySQL workbench. So I will show you how we can do that. I'm closing the other uh, command prompt. So uh, to open the MySQL command prompt, you have to just open any CMD. So I'm just opening a command prompt. And here, and here you have to write MySQL minus U and whatever the username you have entered while uh, uh, like installing the MySQL and minus P. Then it will ask for password. So enter the password of your uh, username and then OK. So now it opened uh, this uh, command prompt for MySQL uh, scripts. So here you have to copy, copy this whole script all the script and up to up to commit and you have to paste it here you have to paste it here so once you paste it it will uh, the dummy database will be created uh, in the mysql so uh, this is the one of the way to uh, like uh, create the dummy database if you don't want it to use the uh, mysql command prompt you can use mysql workbench also so for that you have to just uh, uh, go to windows and here all apps and here mysql workbench you have to open mysql workbench mysql and then mysql workbench so once you open that you have to connect to your uh, root database so i'm just clicking it here it is already saved in my system so i'm just clicking it here here click on uh, the password if you are not getting here you can click on this plus symbol and then it will ask for the username and password so click on ok now this is connected so it will ask uh, it will open a query uh, board also so yeah you can see there is a query board also open here so i'm just removing the previous query and we have to uh, copy the query from uh, here so if you see copy option is there so it is copied and now paste the all the query here and after pasting you have to just uh, uh, execute uh, this uh, this query so for that we have a hello button that is given here so just click on this so now we can see uh, the execution has been success and the data tables the dummy database has been created which is required for our process now our next task is to update the uh, database properties like uh, username and password so for that go to uh, eclipse and open your project and inside java resources click on src and here you have uh, one folder up uh, db details dot property so open this file and here you have to update your uh, driver name if you wanted to use any other driver uh, suppose you wanted to use uh, like oracle or uh, some some other uh, database so you can use the driver update uh, you can update the driver details here and you can update the uh, connection string similarly so uh, here i i have updated uh, my system details you can update yours so once this is done uh, now we have to uh, do another thing that is maven build so uh, for that you have to just right click on the project and then run as and you have to select maven build dot 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 and it opens a window and it will show uh, like what uh, commands you need to run so let it open so here you can see there is a goals option so in the goals we will write clean install and you can uh, select the skip test button and then apply and then run so what it will do is it will uh, run uh, maven build and uh, like uh, create a jar file of uh, the required things so you can see uh, the build is in process and maven build is success now so maven build is also completed now now our next step uh, should be uh, force update of this project so for that we have to just right click and then maven update project and then you have to just click this uh, force update and make sure this uh, thing is selected and click on ok so now uh, the force update is uh, updating here and once it is complete yeah now it is completed now our next step should be tomcat configuration but before that make sure uh, you just right click on this project and go to build path and configure build path make sure there are no errors here like in the libraries if there are any error try to fix them first so here i can see there are no errors here uh, so that is fine for me and uh, i will just uh, close it so now we have to see uh, how we can configure the tomcat 
so in my system if i see a uh, server there is no server assigned here so for that you have to just right click and right click to the project and you can do run as run on server so if you do run on server if uh, a tomcat is configured in your eclipse it will automatically uh, show here uh, like uh, tomcat server but it is not configured right now so you have to select uh, manual define as new server and here you have to open apache and from this you have to select any version so uh, preferably we use uh, we 8.0 and 9.0 so i will go with this 9.0 now click on next so once you click on next uh, it will ask to uh, download and install so if you, if you have a tomcat installation directly you can directly browse that or you can click on download and install so it will ask uh, to accept this so click on accept and finish and uh, give a location where you wanted to use it so i'm creating a, a like a tomcat folder new folder somewhere you can you can create a folder and select folder so same folder you have to browse uh, here so once uh, the browse is done uh, if, if you are getting some error like uh, it does not exist you can just rename this to 01 or something and uh, this error should be oh it is not going then just browse it again so so now the error is gone click on next and here make sure this uh, tender management should be on the right side not in the left side if it is in left side uh, just uh, use the add button or add all button to move it to the right side if anything else is there in the uh, right side just remove uh, that other project into the left side so here we have to keep only that project whichever we are going to run now click on finish so once you uh, do that you can see in the servers uh, uh, dashboard uh, this is starting and this started to localhost 8080 so uh, it is still loading and let it uh, start first yeah so now you can see uh, this uh, tinder management project is running in my system and you can see uh, this notice board is getting updated actually this is updating uh, from the database which we created right now so this thing is uh, running here okay now uh, if you are getting like uh, this uh, sometime you will get the error like this uh, port is already in use like local host 8080 is already in use so for that you have to do one thing you have to just go to the server and double click it so it will open a, a, a server uh, dashboard here so you can see here uh, server dashboard is showing here and now you have to change the port if if 8080 is already in use you have to just click on overview if modules is selected it will show like this if overview is selected just click on uh, overview it will show like this and here in the port section you have to update the http1 inside ports inside ports uh, there is a http 1.1 uh, port number so here if you update to 8082 if you wanted to run the project in 8082 and then save it and then we have to restart it so we can just right click or just select the server and then restart it so it will start the project in 8082 port so if i go there and refresh this uh, this page should not be available now because this port is now uh, this project is now running at 8082 so we have to just change the port 8082 and now you can see uh, this is loaded now fine okay so uh, this is done now we will see a uh, like uh, perfectly running demo of this project so for that uh, i will just uh, show you uh, uh, first login with the vendor account so i am just going to log in so for that uh, click on login button and here user login so uh, for by default uh, the email id is sussy at the red .com and the password is also sussy and you can click on uh, login as vendor so this is the home page here we can see uh, the user is logged in and now uh, you can see all the tenders available so you can uh, go to the tenders and view all tenders if you click on that window here we are able to see what are all the available tenders which are available to bid so tender name type budget location deadline everything is showing here similarly if you wanted to bid for a tender you can click on bid for a tender so here uh, these all tenders are uh, shown here and here you can see these tenders are expired that means these tenders are assigned to some other uh, it was released some time back but it is assigned to some other vendor so it is not uh, now available to bid 
but we are uh, it, uh, one tender is available to bid now that is this one so we can click on bid now uh, if you wanted to bid for this game development tender uh, whose budget is around this one and uh, deadline should be this so you can click on this uh, bid now and here it asks for uh, the bid amount like whatever amount you wanted to bid for it so here if you wanted to increase the amount or decrease the amount you can decrease it as per your requirement suppose i wanted to complete the tender uh, in 14000 only uh, 1 lakh 40000 only okay so click on uh, change the amount and uh, click on bid now the value must be greater than or equal to okay so uh, uh, the minimum requirement is fixed now uh, by the uh, admin so you can change the uh, value it should only allow greater than 15000 so it, you have to uh, allow those rules okay so i am uh, giving 16 uh, 160000 rupees and then i am bidding for it okay so you can see uh, now we can we will be able to see the uh, bid uh, bid history so if you go to the bidding history 1,60,000 is a recent uh, uh, bidding uh, that we have done right now. Great. So it is showing here, and uh, it is the, the the status of this uh, tender, uh, this uh, bid uh, is still pending because it it is not approved from the admin. The admin have to approve it or reject it, then only it will update the status. So similarly, you can check the status here, and uh, you can if you want, you can update the profile or you can view the profile. You can view the profile. And if you wanted to update uh, the profile, you can update it also. Suppose you wanted to change the name or change something. So you just uh, change it here and you have to verify the password. So you have to re-enter the password and just uh, click on update profile. So you can now see uh, this has been updated. And if you view the profile now, it will be uh, the updated uh, uh, thing will be shown. So this is uh, uh, the thing uh, in the vendor account similarly you can change password also so here it will ask for the old password new password and re-enter the new password so in this way you can change the password also okay so i'm logging out from the vendor account now i will log in as an admin so for that you have to just click on login and uh, for admin i think uh, the username is admin and uh, password is also admin with a capital so click on uh, login as admin so admin account is logged in now and here admin will also be able to see all the tenders here available and also uh, create a new tender if admin wanted to create a new tender it can enter all the details here tender name tender type uh, place price uh, deadline uh, location and description everything and launch the tender once it clicks uh, this thing uh, it will be now available for all the vendors to see uh, like this is the new tender which is coming uh, by this deadline in the same way, uh, the admin can see the uh, tender bids also. So you, you can see now tender bids is showing here. So if you wanted to accept a bid, you can see here also. So uh, some project uh, we have given tender. So I think I don't remember 51. It was for this project. 16,000. I think uh, it was 1,50,000. Yeah, so this bid is done right now uh, with uh, that user. I think uh, that user details you will be able to see here if you open. Okay, so yeah, the same user had bid uh, uh, for this tender and the amount is 1,60,000 reports. So I, I can, uh, the admin can accept or reject from here. So if you accept it, it will be updated in the uh, uh, user or vendor account. So I'm going to accept it right now. And now you can see bid has been accepted successfully. And similarly, here uh, now one more notification will start coming in some time. So this uh, tender has been approved with this vendor. Similarly, you can uh, see the assigned bids like which uh, tender is assigned to which uh, vendor and which task. Which project is assigned to which vendor and uh, what is their application ID. Similarly, you can add, admin can add a notice. So, what will be the notice title and what is the description? Uh, like that, then, if you add something, it will come in the uh, notice board. Similarly, you can remove the notice and update the notice, view all notice. So, this is all, and uh, you can log out also. So, uh, this is all the system flow that we have done in the tender management system. Actually, this thing should be improved uh, if improved. 
and we are currently working on this so trying to improve this project so if you want you can uh, support uh, improving and you can uh, give a pr to this project uh, with uh, i will share the link so that's all i think that is uh, this has become a very long video so thank you for watching this uh, long video and uh, i hope you will support uh, my channel and uh, please uh, give your feedback in the comment section and don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you